This is exciting, I've got to say. How do you feel like now? I'm pretty good. Very excited actually to get them in here. It's taking too long. <laughs> So yeah, we've invited a WPS to uh, meet the students and uh, hello and uh, thank you and uh, talk about drawing with Paolo, DWP. So they're here uh, to have a fun time and spend maybe 40 minutes together and see what they know and see what I know and uh, you know, have fun. Are you going to talk about your shirt? Yeah, probably. Talk about the logo and all that, see if they recognize it. Hi! How are you? Good. Hi, buddy. Are you going to put this on the list? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. That's why I got yeah. my friends. Yeah. Is it? I am. Say hi to your mom. Hey, mom. You're going to be on YouTube. We are? Are you filming me right now? I'm not. Aww. Hey, can we all say a big good afternoon to our mom? Yeah. So it takes some time to build them up. In about maybe six months, I had a thousand people signed up. So it took six months to get a thousand. And then maybe two years later, I had maybe 10,000 and so forth, right? So it has to build up. If you guys are starting a YouTube channel, then you have to take your time and be patient. Um, I keep saying in my videos, the three Ps. Do you remember what the three Ps are? No. So what does it take to, to draw, right? You need three Ps. The three, yes, go ahead. I mean, it's a linear So those are your basic tools, right? That's absolutely correct. But inside of you, you need something else. You need different tools. Love. Go ahead. Practice and patience. Practice, patience. Those are two of the three Ps. What's the other one? Yeah, persevere, right? You have to keep at it. What do people do when they don't like their drawing? They throw it out. They're like, oh, I don't like this trash. I'm going to quit. So what you tend to do, when I was a kid, I used to draw. I started drawing as three. And I made a nice horse. I thought it was a beautiful horse. And I showed my parents, look at my drawing. And they said, oh, wow, that's a great elephant. But it's a horse. <laughs> it's not an elephant. Like, look at its ears, right? It didn't make any sense to me that they didn't see a horse. But I didn't quit at that point. So somebody here earlier said they had a YouTube channel, right? You started your YouTube channel. You don't have that many viewers at the moment. But that's okay. 
patience, perseverance, and practice, you'll get there for sure. Okay, right. So I brought a few things to show you. I brought a few things. So for example, when I film my videos, you notice how I film, right? You see the, you see the top of the drawing from on top. Um, this is what I use. Who can name this? Go ahead. Tripod. What's your name? Um, Nerys. Tripod. Why is it called a tripod? Yeah. Three feet. Yes, feet or legs, or you can call them pods, are, are just a different word for legs, right? So we got three legs. And this over here is what we call a boom. Now, I have a little bit at the front end over here, which is, what do I put in that? Oh, yes. yes, this is a part that holds a camera. My camera is my iPhone. So I have an iPhone 6 here, which you can use any iPhone if you like. And I, I connect it to this, and this is what's actually filming when I'm drawing. What inspired you to start a YouTube channel? That's a great question. So, what inspired me? I went to school as an artist. So, I graduated from Concordia University. You guys know Concordia? Yeah. You've heard of that before, right? So, I graduated from fine arts education, and but I wasn't teaching art. I was actually working for Apple, and I missed that part of it, of being able to draw and paint and teach people how to do that. So one day I was home and I said, how can I reach more people than just being in a classroom? So in this classroom, how many are you? 20. You're 20, right? Every classroom is more or less 18 to 22 people, sometimes 24 and so on. That's the same people over and over every day. If I'm on the internet, I can reach, right now, I have about 11 million views. So 11 million views compared to 20 is huge. And that's why I decided to launch a YouTube channel. Yes? Is your specific style of drawing that you love? Uh, yeah, comic book style. So everything that is black and white, uh, you, you've all seen my drawings, they're all black and white. And the reason why they're black and white is because I'm lazy. I hate having to retrace stuff and, and color. I like to have yeah. stuff done fast. I know. Yeah, right? Why don't you put this? Oh, okay. If you like me, if you like me, please do it. I, I'm lazy. I don't even sharpen my pencils. I brought some tools, I'll show you what I use. And really, it's just a push pencil because I don't like having to sharpen. If I have to start preparing stuff, then I don't do it. So that's maybe my problem. <laughs> When I started realizing so many people were watching my videos, when, when my email started filling up like non-stop. Yeah. Uh, I have a Facebook channel, which is our Facebook page, which is called Drawing with Powell, and people constantly write to me. So in about three days, I have 50 emails from yeah, people I don't even know. That say, hey, can you draw this? I like this drawing. Would you like to do, do that? Here's a picture of me. Can you draw it? So that's how I learned that, yeah, I was starting to get popular because I had a hard time answering those emails. I don't anymore. I can't. There are just too many. So I try once in a while, but it goes too quickly. Okay, so how do I draw? What do I use to draw? Well, I got, I brought my pencil case. I want to show you some of my tools here. I've got this. You know what this is? you recognize this? It's an eraser. It's an eraser, exactly. It's an eraser. You're absolutely right. You pass it around. It's, a, it's an actual pencil eraser. It allows you to erase in nice thin lines. Because, of course, you all know what this is. It's a nice white eraser. Yeah, why white? Why do I use the pink ones? It, it makes the color. Why do you think that, I think I'm white is the strongest eraser? White is a pretty strong eraser. It does a really good job. It does not destroy your paper. It doesn't also smudge. Because the pink ones are too hard. You'll feel, I'll pass this one the other way. You can pass that around. You'll feel it's a little softer. And it doesn't rip out the paper. And it doesn't smudge. I find the pink ones leave pink lines. This is what I used to draw with. Have you seen this before? These are big. They're called Big Matic pencils. I don't know if everybody's seen them. So you see them in the YouTube videos. Big Matic pencils. Uh, they have little leads in them that you can just yank out. And uh, yeah. these things, however, never drop these pencils because they, they shatter inside after them and they're hard to work with. But these are a 0 0.7, so they can make a very thin line. And you can make very dark lines, and you can make very light lines. So that's why I like these most. And the best part is that I don't have to sharpen them. Just a little and you're, you're ready to go. But people tend to think that because you're good at drawing, you're using super fancy tools. You're not using super fancy tools. Use whatever tools that are lying around the house. That's okay. As long as you're drawing, that's all I care about. I want you guys to be creative, inventive, do stuff, invent things. So, who has a hard time drawing here? Very difficult time. Why is that? Why do you have a hard time drawing? It doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. Why not? It doesn't end up being what you want it to be, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that the same for you? No, I used to draw good, but now I'm bad. Because you stopped drawing. Yeah. That's why. Uh, uh, never stop. Experience? Inexperience. 
Inexperience, yes, because you don't practice enough. You're not persevering. Okay, so let's say I wanted to draw something as simple as a, a, an ice cream cone. What are the shapes in an ice cream cone? Yeah? Go ahead. Like a period? Like a round thing? Cone? Like a cone, right? No, no. Ice cream cone, makes sense. But well, what's the basic shape? Think of the basic shape of an ice cream cone. What is the cone shape? Mm. Triangle. Triangle. So if I want to draw an ice cream cone, all I have to do is draw a, a triangle. And that's upside down, right? That's what I was waiting for. Yes, yeah, upside down triangle. So essentially, I would draw an upside down shape like that, right? So this is a triangle. But what gives it volume afterwards is, we said earlier, a oval. If I put an oval at the top over here, just like that, this creates my cone effect. Okay? So that's what gives volume. But then I need to add shading to that so it makes more sense. Yeah, go ahead. I want to done this, but then it never worked because if because you know how you're supposed to draw the, the ice cream inside? Uh-huh. That, that's the hard part. It is a very difficult yeah. part. So it, it's kinda of hard to see because the oval that's actually where the cone is. It's hidden. Yeah. Yeah, you're not supposed to see the oval essentially. But in your mind, it helps you build that drawing when you have all the shapes. Always draw through your entire drawing. What I mean by that is, if I were to draw a, a cube, for example, right? I got my cube. Say, this is a, a square. I need to create two squares to make a cube. Put one in the back of the other. One in the back of the other, like that, right? And then I attach every corner. So I can go like this, like this, like this, like that. So I just created a cube. But technically, you're not supposed to be see through the cube unless it's made of glass. So this part is invisible. You can't see that. This part is invisible. You can't see that. But when you erase those lines, it looks more like a real cube because you drew through it. So same thing for your little uh, ice cream cone. In order for it to look more realistic, you need to have that oval at the top because you can really put your foundation in there and decide that maybe this side here is shaded. These markers don't work really. Yeah, I checked that the other blue one actually they go up right quickly. They dry really quickly. This one, yeah? So this way, now it looks a little bit more realistic. Oh yeah, I know what we're talking about. There we go. Okay, so I have more of a cone shape because I put my shading in there. I can put my detail in there later on. So my cone shape, right, if I want to. But then you get the tough part, the, the, uh, the ice cream itself. So what shape is the ice cream? Uh, circle. Circle. It's a basic shape. Half, uh, half circle, oval, depends how long you've had your ice cream. Right? <laughs> so you have to look how long you've had the ice cream. So I can actually draw, if I want to, I can draw a circle on top of that. Now, technically, if I had an eraser and this was pencil, I could just get rid of that bottom part here, not worry about that anymore, and then draw the other part that's just on top of that, like this. See, so this is just basic shapes. Now, does it matter that this is not there anymore afterwards? No. Not really, because you got your ice cream cone. Everything is based in basic shapes. Always look for the basic shape. When you see a car, everybody gets stuck in the highlights, the detail, all that stuff. I don't care about the detail. So the top part of the car, where we sit, is the squarish shape. And the bottom part of the car, which is the body of the car, is a rectangular shape. So I'm just going to add a little dimension to this. We're going to make it 3D. Okay, so three dimensions. You know what three dimensions are? Yes. Yeah, okay. So depth, height, and width, right? Okay, so the top part of the car. We'll go like this. The squarish shape. Then it has a camera. Right? That, that looks like the top of a car, right? Okay. Now, some people will say, yeah, but cars are rounded. Don't worry about that later. Just do the basic shapes. Then we'll do the bottom part of the car, which follows this line, follows this line. This line back here follows this line. Back down, go across. There's your car. Okay, we need circles now. You were talking about circles. Circle here, circle there. Then it's cheap. We want it really to look like a car. We can't have this part in here. So that's why you have an eraser, guys. Get rid of those things. And there's the beginning of your car. But then you need to design it a little bit. And that's where you're going to put those nice curvy shapes in there. And then get rid of that square car. Right? Then you get rid of that. This is how they do it in industrial design. You know? Get rid of that. Keep that line there. Get this out of here. And you keep, you keep, yeah, you erase a lot. That's the whole point. You want to keep just drawing stuff over and over. This round this out, put a bumper in there. You know, you do what you want to do with your car. See that? How many times do we erase when we do our videos, our drive and follow those? Oh, uh, 17 times? Over and over and over again. But the whole trick here is that you want to see what the basic shapes and objects are. One last thing, so what's this shape? What is it? No. A no Rectangle, oval? Hmm, it's a good combination. What do we call the combination of an oval and a rectangle? Rectal. Rectal. <laughs> a cylinder. Oh, right? oh. oh yeah! <laughs> I want to draw 
small water bottle. All right. Rectangle. Rectangle. Oval. With an oval and an oval. This is our cylinder. So essentially then I can build my bottle inside that, right? We know that there's a, a bottleneck. And there's nothing else I need to do except to erase that, those other lines. Making it a smaller circle inside there. Bottle and bottle. But then you need to use your eraser. You get rid of things you don't need. Get rid of that. Whoa. So what do we see? Bottle. 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 You said like a wine bottle. bottle. I brought them sketch pads on my drawings. So I'm going to pass some around. They're different, but you can share them amongst each other. Be careful while turning the pages. And you can check out my original drawings. And you pass them to the next day laughing at these drawings. Yeah, you guys can huddle. Huddle together. That's really good. Let me see if everyone else can like see it like this. Pass around the drawing to if you wish. Or if you it always like uh, from Narnia. Where am I? Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it does not matter. Where do you saw it on? Yeah. Oh, that's the one that we drew. That's the one that we drew. That's the one that we drew. That's the one I screwed up. Do you guys keep your butterflies? Yeah. We should show them what they look like. Oh my god. Today gets uh, one of these uh, DWP iron-on badges, and they can stick it on their shirts or their hats or whatever. You know, a little memento of uh, of what we did today. Let's go with the logo. That's car, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> I am your dad's car. Here you go. No, don't do that for real. You're not your license. 
Okay, by the way, the back does not peel off. This is what glues to your shirt. So you just I invited you because I have been playing drawing with Paolo videos for quite a while and we have had so much fun in the process that I really wanted my students to experience a real drawing with Paolo experience and to meet the man behind the videos. <laughs> I use the drawing with Paolo videos because it actually teaches the students really, really great art concepts. It actually gives the students an opportunity to uh, learn the basic skills of drawing, having fun in the meantime, and really it really allows the students to realize that yes, they can draw, they can draw something really elaborate and it doesn't take really, really expert skills. All you need is a paper, a pencil, and the three Ps. And uh, what are the three Ps? Patience, <laughs> perseverance, and practice. You got it. Awesome. <laughs>